Siddham's phone started lighting up on Saturday with people begging for help. I, mean, I could hear the desperation in her voice. This is multiple phone calls I've received like this, voicemails, text messages, and you could hear people desperate for help. Sidham and his son rescued four people on Saturday and spent the night in a nearby pilot's lounge, then decided to fly again Sunday morning. I spoke with my son, which is my co-pilot. Um, I, I said, hey, do you, you want to go back out and, and try to help today? And Sidham and his son were headed up to Black Mountain. Flight tracking shows no flight restrictions in place Saturday or Sunday morning when Sidham flew through the Lake Lure Gap. The Sidham spotted an older couple waiting for help then landed in what's left of their driveway. It, it was kind of unstable, so I didn't want to put more weight in the helicopter to lift back off. So I left my son with the other victim and, and I was just going to take one person down at the time. Three minutes away, Sidham spotted a group of rescuers just down the river. He landed and found someone in charge. Told him my, uh, my background experience, law enforcement, uh, firefighting, pilot. He immediately started uh, helping with coordination. He, he gave me radio frequencies to coordinate with them on, um, set up a landing area for me to come back with the uh, other victim. And in the uh, middle of the whole conversation, conversation and, and then blocking the road off, I was greeted by the uh, Lake Lure fire chief or assistant chief maybe, and he shut down the whole operation. He asked me to leave and, and, and I said, hey, I have no problem getting out of your area. If that's what you want us to do, we'll, we'll leave, no issue. At that point, I asked him, you know, what was the reason I had to leave them there? And, and he said, again, you're interfering with my operation. I, I just need you to get out of the area. I said, sir, I'm, I don't know where you were trained at, but I know how my training is and I'm not going to leave personnel behind. I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. He said, if you turn around and go back up the mountain, you're going to be arrested. I said, well, sir, I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. I, I don't know what to tell you. And he said, I'm, I'm letting you know. And at that point, he waved for two law enforcement officers to come over and told me that again, if I go back up the mountain, I would be arrested. He flew the three minute trip back, picked up his son and left the woman's husband behind. I'm sure he was flooded with emotions and, and trying to rescue other people. And I, I just felt that it was best at the time to leave. So I did follow his instructions and I ha had a conversation with the female victim before I left, apologizing and explaining she, she was standing there. She heard the whole conversation. And um, they were both very, very surprised, very upset. The husband, as I was leaving off of the side of the mountain, at that point, separated from his wife. He was, he was upset. I can only imagine. Siddham and his nearly 1,400 flight hours turned his chopper around and headed back to South Carolina, passing people waving for help along the way. As I was actually leaving to go back to get my son, the original chief or, or captain that I spoke to, uh, his crew and, and himself, they, they came back over and said, hey man, we, we can't tell you to go get the victim. We can't even ask you to go get the victim, but we can tell you if you come back with the victim, we'll have you a designated landing spot and, and they, they won't, we'll make sure they don't come over here. So there was no flight restriction when you went in? No, no, no. flight restriction when I went in. Uh, it, it went in place 20 or 30 minutes after the confrontation. confrontation. My name is Jonathan Howard. I'm a member of the Florida State Guard Special Missions Unit. And I'm also up here with Aerial Recovery, a nonprofit. I came up here on Sunday with Aerial Recovery before we even got activated. We flew up here and then we got activated, which was great. I had my team up here working as well. Here's the problem. I'm gonna tell you everything that's happening from the ground, what I'm actually seeing, because what they're telling you is complete bullshit on the news and these politicians don't have a fucking clue and they're lying. And I'll say this now, I'll say it at the end of the video. The only thing I need from this video is helicopters. If I have helicopters, I can save lives. Without helicopters, I can't reach these people. It doesn't matter how many chainsaws and trucks I got, I can't get to them. They're 10 miles in, 20 miles, 40 miles in the mountains. There's no way to get with them or even communicate with them. I am literally flying around in a civilian helicopter looking for SOS messages carved in the mud or painted on the ground and we're dropping down and saving them. I will tell you when we go up in the air, I probably see 40 civilian helicopters and I might see two Blackhawks, National Guard, military, whatever they are. That's it. No one's out there doing rescues. I have my entire team up here from Florida right now and they have no ability to go rescue these people other than what they can drive to. And the people that are in dire need, they're out in the mountains. They are completely cut off. Now I will say, I spoke to my congresswoman down in Florida and she's a badass and she made a bunch of phone calls and now we got two contracted 60s coming up here tomorrow, which is great. I love that. But like, 
I still don't understand why we don't have more helicopters. Like we'll get a lot of work done with that, but there's no, uh, no there's no military. There's no, go, no one's doing nothing. I just, it, it blows my mind. And they're not even allowing people to see what's really going on. One of our friends yesterday, they were actually escorting CNN down at Lake Lore and they wouldn't even let CNN, the sheriff department would not let them go videotape the bad areas, how destructive it is. I don't know why they don't wanna show you all that, but I mean, it is bad. I should also say, when I flew here on Sunday, they actually stopped us from going in, the sheriff department. And it was because of a bunch of politics that they were claiming was a speaker of the House of North Carolina that was preventing us from even going in and trying to kick us out which I have clarified today with North Carolina politicians that reached out to me, good on them. And they were like, that's complete bullshit. Speaker of the House has nothing. He wants you guys there. But this is the kind of political BS that is happening here right now. Like everyone's trying to be in charge without taking any type of action. Nobody wants to coordinate with anybody. Everybody wants to pretend like they're being the hero while these people are literally fucking dying in the mountains. And these people, like I'm saying, these people are limited medication. They're running out of oxygen and there's no one going to get them. The most effective way I have found to go find these people is by getting in a helicopter and flying down the rivers and roads and looking for SOS messages or people waving us down. And then we drop down and get them. We have all these people here. We have law enforcement. We have state guard, national guard. They have no way to go get these people. Yesterday when I was at the Asheville airport refueling, which by the way, the civilian is paying all this out of his own pocket. He's not even looking for a reimbursement. I think we did four refuelings yesterday. And that was like just in half a day's work. We're in Nashville and I saw two Air Force helicopter 60s. And I knew they were PJs just looking at them. And I went up to them like, hey guys, like, what are y'all doing? And like, this is what you need to be doing. This, 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 this is how I'm finding people. And they're like, we can't go. We're waiting on Title 10 orders. And I'm like, what? They just, they can't get any authority. There's military helicopters all over here sitting on the ground and they can't do nothing. Even my JSOC boys in Fayetteville, they can't get orders to come out here. It is just the most disgusting thing and they're killing these people. And I don't know why they're doing it. I don't know what kind of conspiracy. I've heard so many things, whatever you wanna come up with, but they are literally allowing these people to fucking die in the mountains right now because we can't get helicopters. They got money for everything else in the fucking world right now, but if they could just get us helicopters, we could fly out there and rescue these people. So I hope this video goes viral. I hope these politicians get fired. I hope people get pissed off. They'll probably kick me out of the state of North Carolina for doing this, but you know what? I don't care, because if I can save one more life for it, it's fucking worth it to me.